Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's the Katie and Barry show today. Uh, joining me is my partner in all of this from across the pond. Welcome, Katie Hopkins. Thank you very much for having me on once again. And my suggestion to spring on you today, uh, Barry, is that we change tables a little bit, reverse roles, because I know some news that other people don't know, which actually, you know, is one of my favorite things is being kind of queen of the gossip. But the gossip here at ATP is that you have a new book out and you've just released it and no one knows just yet. So I get to ask you questions about it. Let's do it. It's called <laughs> Because You Asked and it's out as of yesterday. Excellent. Now tell me, because you asked, uh, in terms of when you were sitting thinking, up, did you come up with a name after you wrote this or was it a prompt because you asked, as in people always ask you this stuff? Actually, it's the latter. Um, this, the book is a series of essay answers to questions uh, posed by American Truth Project viewers from across the globe uh, for an interpretation, sometimes an explanation as to what the heck is going on, uh, both domestic and foreign uh, policy of the United States as it relates to the five key issues of American Truth Project. And I think one of the interesting things, having just read it myself, uh, is that if somebody wants to go to this and they have a kind of question and they don't want to read a whole book or they haven't got time or they're just on a short journey or whatever, they can, you can dip in and out of this, can't you? You can go to a chapter, you can get an answer to a question and then come back to it if you wish. And that was exactly my intent, to make it simplistic uh, in its format, but not to cut corners on let's say the sophistication of the answer. So if you really want to know, for example, why it was important for Trump to move the embassy from Tel Aviv uh, to Jerusalem on behalf of the United States of America, you'll know the answer and it won't take you about 10 minutes to figure it out. It's, uh, it's an easy chapter to get through. I'm always drawn with books or, or stories or I suppose life. I'm always drawn to kind of people stories. So stories of people that you know, probably, you know, some of them I know, Robert Spencer, I know is featured in your book. Um, but there's one lady in particular, Phyllis Chesler, I believe her name is. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about her? She features in the book, there's a chapter about her. Yeah, she's an extraordinary story. She's one of the original feminists. I mean, from the very beginning. Uh, in the 60s, and she was right there with all the leaders of women's empowerment, um, you know, along the lines of the founder of Ms. Magazine and that sort of thing. And what happened uh, to Phyllis was the women's movement left her behind. Um, it got linked up with a bunch of uh, affiliated theories and progressive movements that Phyllis no longer felt comfortable about. For example, Phyllis had the unfortunate uh, circumstance of marrying a Muslim man. Uh, she was taken to the Middle East. They seized her passport. She was a prisoner against her will, a highly educated uh, woman scholar on the subject of women's rights. And when she finally managed to escape back to the United States, Nobody wanted to hear about it. Why? Well, it would have made Islam look bad. And the women's movement said no, they left her behind. And there's story after story of poor Phyllis uh, being excluded from the conferences that she had put together, where her best selling books on women's empowerment all of a sudden didn't matter because women's empowerment is fine until and unless you speak out against abuse of women by Muslim men. And tell me on that, because I'm thinking of these stories, so people, when they read your book, uh, because you asked, you know, they can find these stories of different things that happen, different people within it. Keith Ellison also gets a mention, doesn't he? And, I, and he's someone I've been focused on for a long time because he kind of handed the baton to Ilhan Omar. What's your, just to give your uh, readers an idea of, of what you talk about with Keith. Yeah, Keith Ellison uh, is one of those fellows that has been under the radar more than he should have been. He's the first uh, male Islamic congressman. Uh, he has radical ideas 
uh, literally were formatted under the tutelage of uh, the greatest, and I say that word in quotes, uh, anti-Semite, anti-white preacher on American history, the head of the Nation of Islam I'm referring to. And even though Keith Ellison was one of the guys carrying the torch for Louis Farrakhan, he got elected to Congress a whole bunch, and now he's Attorney General of Minnesota, and he turned over his district to Ilhan Omar. And uh, one quick story a congressman told me once when the Democratic um, Caucus went to Israel, Keith Ellison disappeared. They couldn't find him for several days. They finally found him back at the airport. He said he'd spent the whole time with his brothers in Hamas in the Gaza Strip to promote freedom for those terrorists. And the rest of the delegation was horrified. He refused to meet with the Israelis who he hates. And if there was a sort of part of your book, because I'm thinking about people when they write books, I know uh, with mine, there's always something that if I was going to say to someone, read this, like if you're going to read one chapter, if you were going to read one bit or you only had a little time, what's that bit for you? What's the bit that you think is important or you'd want people to come away with? Well, I, I really like some of the stuff that I put in about Trump's plans um, that were fought to the death by goofballs. Uh, and what I'm thinking about in particular, in answer to your question, that's a great question, by the way, the border wall, right? Every single scholar that has any understanding of the threat of an open border, uh, the threat of drugs, of violent criminals, of um, sexual exploitation of children, uh, of weapons being smuggled in, everything bad about an open border, uh, Trump wanted to solve with one simple thing, build a barrier on the border. And some of the stories that, that I ran into that I wrote about are legislators deciding that the wall must be illegal. And if it's not illegal, we're going to have a boycott against any contractor who works on it because everyone knows walls don't work, which literally may be the dumbest thing any politician in America has ever said, because these same people all have walls around their private estates. They have walls around the buildings where they go to work. Everywhere they go, there's security, either armed or a physical barrier or both. And yet they want to deny Americans that same right to be secure in their own country. And I talk I, about I that. You know, I, I commend you on this because I think, Barry, what it does, it's informative, it breaks down, it's educational, but it's got you, I can hear you talking in it. So it's done in a manner that it's almost as if I'm sat here listening to you, but it's in a book. Now, listen, if people want to get a hold of it because you asked, how can they go about getting hold of their copy so they can read what we've just been discussing? Well, thank you for asking, uh, Katie. It's very simple. Uh, in the U.S., uh, if someone takes out their cell phone and types B-Y-A, which stands for because you asked, and sends it to the number 88202 and push send, you'll get a free chapter of the book and a link to get the whole book if you want to. Or you can just go to our website, americantruthproject.org, outside of the United States, and the free offer is on the website as well. Put in your email. We'll send you free chapters of the book. So you can decide if you want to buy the rest of it or not. Perfect. So BYA, because you asked. That's the key. Those are the letters people need to text. And send it to the number 88202, push send. You'll get a free sample. Okay, Barry, thank you so much. I've enjoyed being the boss and asking the question. So, uh, you know, we might do this again. Write another book and we get to do this again. Absolutely. And thank <laughs> all of you out there for joining us on ATP report today. Thanks, Katie, for a great interview. We'll see you next time. I'm Barry Newsbaum.